Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class of C two three C one and Environmental Engineering one. If you can remember, we were discussing the arsenic pollution in the last in the last class. Yes, sir. So today we'll discuss about iron. This is mainly found in naturally in groundwater. Naturally, we can find it. We can find it in groundwater. In surface surface water is uh, generally not very common, but if you have industrial discharge, you may have this. But it's less common in surface water more common in groundwater okay in Bangladesh the permissible limit of iron in water is one milligram per liter iron content up to five milligram per liter is acceptable for rural water supply for rural water supply only So basically, the limit is one milligram per liter. One milligram per liter, according to Bangladesh standard. Okay. Now let's look what's the condition in the groundwater iron. Iron content in groundwater. Okay, this is all groundwater scenario in Bangladesh. Dissolved iron in shallow tubel, not deep tubel, shallow tubel water of Bangladesh. Uh, if you look at this figure, it shows that this symbol stands for 2 to 5 milligram per liter, 2 to 5 milligram per liter. So this is unacceptable. And you have it here, 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 here. So it's quite severe. As you can see okay so it's a problem so previously we saw that yes we have a problem that is arsenic is that's also mainly found in groundwater And another problem will sometimes occur in groundwater of Bangladesh. This is manganese. That is manganese. This is also mainly found in groundwater. So these three are the most common groundwater pollutants in Bangladesh. And the most common groundwater pollutants in Bangladesh. Okay. When we supply groundwater for drinking purpose, we have to consider about these pollutants, not, I mean, we have to consider other pollutants also, but this, we have to keep this in mind that they are, they are very common. Okay? Next is dissolved salts. As I already discussed previously, that what water naturally accumulates a variety of dissolved salts or salts as it passes through soils and rocks on its way to the sea. Now what gives salt or salinity in water? What gives salinity in water? Basically, these are the common 
salt in water. Cations, these are sodium, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Or sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. And anions are chloride, sulfate, and bicarbonate. If they are present in water, then they give salinity. Sometimes, industrial discharges also contain significant amount of dissolved salt. For example, tannery is effluent. Tannery because they use salt in the processing of leather. You know, tannery industry processes what? Tannery industry processes what? Leather. Chamra. Leather. So, in processing of leather, they use salt. And after processing the wastewater, that contains a lot of salt. And if you discharge it into the river, then it brings in it. Now the question is, how do you measure salinity? We measure salinity by how much solid is dissolved in water. For example, sodium is a solid, calcium is a solid, magnesium and potassium is a solid. So that means, but they are in dissolved form. These ions are in, of course, they are in aqueous, dissolved form, dissolved form. In water, they are dissolved. So, if you can me measure how much salt is dissolved here in water, that we call salinity. And it is called total dissolved salt. Total dissolved solid or just as a TDS, total dissolved solid, total dissolved solid. There, yes, sir. Yeah, how? But so it is dissolved. So now, basically, this TDS gives you an idea of salinity. Now, if someone tells you that how do we measure salinity in water, your answer is what? Hmm? How do we measure salinity in water? By measuring TDS. By measuring. Clear? Now, effects of dissolved salts. What happens when this TDS or salinity is very high in water? It gives you a test and it gives you order. Now, there is a criteria based on how much salinity the water has. If the TDS is less than 1500 milligram per liter, then we call it fresh water. Then we call it fresh water. When the TDS is less than or equal 5000 milligram per liter, we call it brackish water. When the salinity is greater than 5000 milligram per liter, we call it saline water. When the salinity is 30,000 to 34,000, we call it sea water. Drinking water, which range 500 to 1000. 500 to what? 1000. And seawater has salinity how much? How many times than the drinking water? This is 1000, this is what? 
30 30 so 30 times serenity then you can tolerate 30 times can you drink it no sir no sir this is severe okay now the thing is why we are concerned about serenity the thing is because most crops can tolerate TDS up to 1500 milligram per liter, that means fresh water. Okay. Water with TDS greater than 2000 approximately is generally unsuitable for irrigation. Now, there is a thing that, for example, you have a in Bangladesh, for example, here you have paddy field, for example, paddy field, right? And farmers use the you have to irrigate, right? You have to irrigate this land on a shed, funny, right? So you have river. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, farmers divert this water to irrigate the uh, paddy field. What happens? We have Bay of Bengal here, right? If and the water actually flows from this is in Bangladesh, this is upstream and this is basically downstream. So the water flows in this direction. Okay. The water flows in this direction. Now somehow if you India or China here, if they put a constructed dam here, so the flow will be less, am right? the flow, flow will be reduced and due to this reduced flow now this ocean water will come in this direction so therefore this river and ocean water you have how, how much salinity 30,000 so this will easily make this water saline and if this water is saline, has TDS more than 2000 or approximately, then can you use it for irrigation? No. No, sir. No. That's a problem. Okay. So we have to think about this issue how we can adapt or resolve this issue. Also, not only surface water, due to the salinity intrusion, the groundwater here is also affected. So the people living in the southern part, many times they cannot drink the groundwater also because they are very saline. Okay. If you, the, if, you like, uh, if you take the coastal belt of Bangladesh, for example, this portion actually, coastal belt, you see that uh, groundwater salinity is very, this is groundwater salinity, EC, okay, groundwater salinity is this. Okay. Now, here is the thing. Um, I told you that, yes, you can measure salinity using or by estimating how much dissolved solid is there. For example, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, right? There is another way of measuring salinity. What is that? First of all, 
try to understand if there is dissolved salt that means they are in ionized form am i right yes sir okay so if there is more ion in water then if you put positive negative or electrical device like this then it will be easier for the electron to pass from there easier for the electron to pass from there to there am i right yes sir that means this water will have higher electrical conductivity conductivity we call it ec electrical conductivity we measure it in micro siemens per centimeter square okay micro siemens per centimeter now that's why there is a relationship between electrical conductivity and tds electrical conductivity and tds so we can and the relationship is like this tds is equals to 0 0.5 it can be 0 0.55 0 0.56 0 0.65 any ray, any value between this range into this electrical conductivity so you can measure TDS in this way also. You put an electrical device, you calculate the electrical conductivity. This unit, you put this and you will get it milligram per liter or gram per liter. Okay? Clear. Okay, sir. There are other uh, pollutants in water, for example, sodium compound, sulfate. Sulfate is this. Chloride, right? Cl. These are also chloride. Now, the thing is, uh, chloride, fluoride in water, they might be necessary for us up to a certain level, but you need to make sure they are they are not exceeded. Or they did they does not they don't exceed the standard concentration level if they are in excess amount then that's a problem okay nitrate nitrate is toxic when present in excessive amount in drinking water which may then cause methaglobinemia in bottle fed infants okay so the nitrate are reduced in a body to nitrides, which react with the oxygen receptor size on the hemoglobin fraction to impair. Impair means to hinder its oxygen carrying capacity. And if you have more nitrate in your body, that can hinder your oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Okay. Lead, this is very toxic, lead poisoning. Do you know where does this come from mainly? Huh? No, sir. You know, naturally, naturally, this is unusual. You may not get this naturally. Actually, you may get this naturally, doctor, but... Huh? Yeah, not, not, I mean, this is element, so yes, uh, they are present in nature, that's fine. I mean, you cannot create an element, right? That's, that's uh, it's quite impossible. But the thing is that in water, in water, they may not be present naturally. That's what I meant in water 
that they may not be present naturally. They are present in nature, of course. Lead is present in nature, right? But they are not present naturally in groundwater. I, I sorry, in water. Then where do they where do where do they come from? Basically, uh, one of the sources is battery industry, right? Battery industry. They use lead, battery industry. And after processing this, after manufacture, when, uh, yes, after manufacture, when they discharge the water without treatment, without treatment, this wastewater contains lead. And if they discharge it directly into the river, then this lead can come into the river. Clear? Yes, so it sir. comes mainly from the battery industry. Also, uh, similar to the way, like a tannery industry discharges chromium. Chromium. This is heavy metal. Lead is also heavy metal. Chromium. What does what happens that when they are in water, if there is fish and they take this food or chromium, then chromium gets injected into their body. Remember that this chromium once get injected, they does not go out. They remains in the flesh of the fish. Now, when human being take them regularly this chromium also gets injected into the body of human and what's the problem the problem is that this chromium is carcinogenic this chromium is Carcinogenic. That means this causes what is carcinogenic? That means this causes cancer. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So yes, lead, sir. I mean, there might be a, diff, a different types of pollutants or heavy metal, like is it chromium? Here, discharged from canary. Okay, mercury. This is also a toxic element. These are all heavy metal, lead, mercury, chromium. They all causes cancer. They all cause cancer. Okay. Uh. Sometimes uh, lead can also come late from lead containers such, such as lead pipes. Previously, uh, when people didn't know the harmful effect of lead, then they used the, this lead to make pipe. To make Lead is a you know metal, right? So you can use this to make pipes and these things. And this pipe may come in this water, which flows flows through this pipe. So that's lead contamination. Also, the tank or water to build the tank or water, they also used material which are made of lead and chromium contamination might also happen to these containers is it clear yes sir dissolved gas sometimes in water you may have gases dissolved 
may have gases in the other hydrogen sulfide H2S. This is all of saying this again. Hydrogen sulfide is a pollutant, right? If you if it this is dissolved in water, then bad smell will come out. Bad smell, objectionable, highly objectionable. Dissolve oxygen. This is important. As I told you, if dissolve oxygen is very important for the water to have dissolved oxygen greater than or equal four to five milligram per liter. This is four milligram per liter. But still, it's not healthy. For a healthy water, dissolved oxygen should be six or seven milligram per liter. At least six to seven milligram per liter. If this is below than this, then the water is polluted and the fish and other species may die. Okay. Carbon dioxide, that is also, that may also be dissolved in water. Carbon dioxide. It is dissolved by water from atmosphere. So, if you have water, then atmosphere you have oxygen, carbon dioxide, right? So, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere may come to the water. In groundwater, in groundwater, what happens that this is soil. Have groundwater here, right? And you have you know many organic matters. Yeah, you have many organic matters. Now, what happens that this organic matter, organic matter is what by the way, guys? Organic matter is carbon hydrogen chain, all right? Long carbon hydrogen chain, right? Right? <coughs> yes, sir. Now, the bacteria or microorganism oxidize them into the presence of oxygen and break this bond, break this bond, and make carbon dioxide. Plus water, plus other compounds. Plus, now what happens? These microorganisms or bacteria take them as a food. Take them as a food. And oxidize it and break them down and breaks them down and make carbon dioxide water other compounds and new cell new bacteria new cell okay now did you see this carbon dioxide is producing is being produced here did you see so this carbon dioxide is here and they get dissolved into the water That's the source of carbon dioxide. Clear? In downward. In downward. Is clear? Hmm? Yes, sir. It unites with water to form H2CO3. So this carbon dioxide, when mixed with water, they, can, they form carbonic acid, fluic acid, H2CO3. H2COC permits the solution of calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate into the bicarbonates of those elements. Hardness. Bicarbonate of those elements means hardness. It causes corrosion in metal and presence of free oxygen. Microbiological quality of water. So far, we have uh, 
talked about the non-living impurities, non-living carbon dioxide, diesel oxygen, hydrogen sulfide, chromium, mercury, lead, nitrate, chloride, these things. Now, salinity, arsenic, iron, right? Now, the thing is, what about the living impurities? What are the living impurities, guys? Bacteria, virus. Algae, fungi, protozoa, yeah, worms. Okay. So they might be present in water. How do you deal with them? First of all, you need to know you need to know that since ground or I already discussed it previously that the soil before reach the water before reaching the groundwater here. The soil is already filtered out, right? When water passes from here to there and reaches there, this is filtered by this soil particles, all right? Filtered by the soil particles. So, um, this water is, the groundwater is usually, usually, Free from bacteria and virus and micro other microorganisms. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Clear. But this is not the case for the surface water. This is not the case for the surface water. Surface water is not filtered out, right? Therefore, it may contain the microorganisms. Clear? Yes, sir. But even for that, for the groundwater, you need to remember one thing that when you extract the groundwater using a tube well if this pipe is contaminated then no matter how clear or pure this water is eventually it is gonna be infected before you take it into a container so if this is contaminated, then this is also contaminated. Even though the water is was cleared at the major source. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. G, sir. G, sir. So <laughs> don't drink groundwater. Just close your just keep your keeping your eyes closed. You have to consider these things also. Sir, food I have you know? Yes, you can boil the water to kill the what? Microorganisms, fine. <laughs> what about chromium? What about arsenic? They are, could they go by boiling it? No, so no, sir. No. You can deal with the microorganisms, but you cannot deal with boiling, but you cannot deal chromium arsenic by boiling. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so first of all, you need to know so it is for okay. Important. The surface water and groundwater quality in terms of microbial contamination, microbial contamination. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, there is an important issue. How do you determine that your water, if your water has microorganisms or not? Is it present or not? How do you determine this? 
one issue here is is this that there may be thousands or billion types of bacteria or virus right coronavirus is just a single coronavirus is just a, a single strain or a species of the virus there are other thousands of billions of species am i right Yes, sir. One, yes, sir. Two, three, four, five, six. How many? Ten thousand. One lakh. Eleven lakh. <laughs> now the question is: Would you test? Would you perform tests to identify each of them one by one? Then how many tests do you need to run? Ten thousand. Hundred thousand. Are you gonna run test hundred thousand? Would it be feasible? Hundred thousand times we will run a test. Is it? No, it's not feasible. No, it's sir. It's not feasible. It's not feasible. What did you do? So we want to test one single parameter, one single species that will tell us that whether there are any other species of it. Clear? one single species or one single organism this one single organism will we will test only one organism and that will tell us whether there is other harmful microorganisms present in water or not that will indicate so this one single organism will indicate whether, whether there are other uh, harmful microorganisms or not so that's why we call it you know what we call it We call it what does it do by the way it indicates right it indicates whether your water is polluted or not by micro by, by microorganisms right it indicates whether your water is polluted by microorganisms or not that's why we call it <coughs> we call it indicator organism We call it indicator organism. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Very important. So that's why they're telling it's impracticable to monitor drinking water for every possible microbial pathogen that might occur with contamination. What is pathogen, by the way? Uh, microorganisms, as I told you. Microorganisms, bacteria, virus, this thing. There may be a billion types of bacteria, types, billion types of bacteria. Now, not all of them are harmful. Some are, some are helpful, benign. Like with yogurt, you take billions of bacteria. In your body, you eat them. Am I right? Yes, sir. In yogurt, yes, sir. In yogurt, you take billions of bacteria in your body, and that bacteria is good for your health. They help you help your metabolism. Now the thing is, the other bacteria. This is good. Okay? There are other types of bacteria. Those are harmful. Or virus. Those are harmful. We call them pathogen. These harmful, we call them pathogen. So we are concerned about this pathogen. Clear? So we are concerned about the pathogen. And to kill this pathogen, to kill this pathogen, we call it disinfection. 
is in fraction. Clear? The process yes, of killing, the process of killing this pathogen is called the disinfection. And you know, pathogen is only the harmful microorganisms. It doesn't refer to the good microorganisms, no. It only refers to the harmful microorganisms. Anyway, so we were in indicator organism. What is the indicator? What would be the indicator organism? Okay, so let's come to a common point. These all microorganisms usually remember very, I mean, listen very carefully. All these microorganisms usually live in a particular type of environment. They cannot survive in all types of environment. They need a particular type of environment. Particular environment. What is the environment? The environment is the warm in the body. They like the body of the warm blooded animal. They like the body of the what? Warm blooded animal. Give me some example of warm blooded animal. Human being, we are warm blooded, right? Huh? Yes, sir. Now, the thing is, if you look at our body, here we have uh, what? Intestine, right? Intestine, polypathon, right? So this bacteria actually lives here. Is it clear? Is all the bacteria and virus lives here? They like this the, the environment here, the warm-blooded animal, intestinal tract. Is it clear? Yes, sir. There is another bacteria that lives here. That's E. coli. Yes, Cherichia coli. This is coliform, it, this belongs to the coliform group of bacteria. So coliform group of bacteria also lives here. Now, the thing is, this coliform group of bacteria is not directly harmful, is not directly harmful, but they usually lives here. Now, these all pathogens, these all pathogens also live here. So what is the common between them? What is the common between all these pathogens and coliform bacteria? Tell they me. are living in the same place. They are living in the same environment. That means that in any water, in any water, you test coliform bacteria, not all these 10,000 bacteria, no. Only the coliform group of bacteria. Can you please turn off your sound? Can you please turn off your sound? So in your water, if you test this coliform group of bacteria and you found that yes, it is present, that means that also indicates that this may or may not be present. Is it clear? Again, if you test in any water sample that coliform bacteria is present that tells you that this water is might have contamination from the human disposal, human waste, intestinal tract, right? So it, it, it is contaminated by human waste and therefore this water might be contaminated with this pathogen. Did you get the concept here? Hello. So I'm telling that this coliform bacteria lives here and this all other pathogens also lives here. Now in your water, if you found coliform bacteria, that means you also have this pathogens presence in water. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, it's, so yes, instead sir. of testing 
for all these pathogens, we just test coliform bacteria in water. And if it is present, then we, we tell, okay, this water might be contaminated with pathogen. There. Yes, sir. So coliform bacteria, we call it, the test is called coliform, uh, total coliform. Total coliform, huh? TC, TC test. So total coliform test in water. Okay, and sometimes we also test fecal coliform. Okay, fecal coliform FC. Coliform bacteria can be of different types. They can be found in soil also sometimes. Okay, but majority of the cases they found in the intestinal tract of warm blooded animal and that refers to the fecal fecal means relating to the this this area okay fecal okay so fecal polyphone so tcfc tests are usually done in water to identify if there are any microbial contamination or not Okay, so this is important. What is indicator organism? Why do we need indicator organism? So you tell, okay, this is difficult to test for all of the bacteria. It's impracticable, right? So we need to test for only one. Yes, this one. So understand this very well. Whatever I have discussed so far, they have written it here. Fecal. Fecal means, as I told you, fecal. As I told you, relating to the intestinal tract. Not only human being. I mean, other warm-blooded animal, like anything, like dog, cat, cow, warm-blooded. Okay. Intestinal tract. Man and all warm-blooded animals. Polyform inhabits. Any habit inhabits when they live here. Okay, so there are different methods to, to calculate this, like in a tube, in a membrane. Okay, now if we discuss this, that the membrane filter, what happens that <clears throat> the water here, membrane filter technique, MF. Okay, that's yeah. Membrane filter technique. What do you do? You have the sample. You want to know the microbial quality okay, of the water. So what do you do? You take a filter here. You take a filter here. Now, the size of the, this filter is smaller than the bacteria of the coliform group. Coliform group of bacteria. The size of this filter, pore, pore size of this filter is smaller than the size of the coliform bacteria. So when you filter this water, would the bacteria pass out? No, the bacteria will, stuck, will, will, stu will be stuck here, right? The bacteria will stick here, filtered. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, you take the filter out. You take the filter out, this filter, and you keep them. You give them some food, lactose or something. You give them some food and keep them in a temperature that is desire, desirable by the bacteria around 27 24 degrees celsius temperature now what do they get they have food they have good environment so they will increase in number right they will grow they will grow if there were 500 now they will be 5000 from 5000 it will be 500k 500k it will be 5 billion is clear yes sir yes sir now, these bacteria actually 
forms colony like this here is a colony here is a colony so they grow in colony okay and one each of the colony may have billions of bacteria so once you put them here and keep them for certain time and after certain time you see there are colonies and you can count them one two three four okay and based on the number of colonies you can calculate how much total coliform or fecal coliform are present in the water clear in the future is it clear guys yes sir the, the pore size of this filter is the pore size of this filter is 1.45 micrometer 1.45 micrometer that is 0.45 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter and bacteria polyform group of bacteria is larger than this size so they cannot pass through the filter okay now radioactive materials they are you know nowadays we see there are a lot of radioactive materials in our water that can be uranium right and any other materials and you know this can cause cancer this can radiate okay and this can cause cancer organic contaminants like Organic contaminants, those contaminants, uh, the contaminants which are organic, like carbon hydrogen structure, and that can be both natural and artificial. Artificial means, you know, like cosmetics, right? Right? The cosmetics like nail polish or anything else, this thing. So these are organic contaminants. Sometimes they can be toxic and carcinogenic. They can produce color also. Okay. So these are all about the pollutants. We discussed all about the pollutants and the water quality, water quality parameters, water, uh, physical chemical properties of water. Now from here, next process, we will discuss how to treat, how to treat the, these types of pollutants in water. Is it clear, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? No, sir.